Good day. Recently, we have uh, been exploring video stabilization with Filmora and NCH VideoPad and a few others. And to make a long story short, we have found that uh, there's a great tool called Virtual Dub, which has been around forever, by the way, a very popular tool that has a free add in available uh, to it called D Shaker. And Virtual Dub itself is free. So why not use that and avoid all the pain of running trials and demos from other companies? Just use the free thing from Virtual Dub. Well, the, the main reason is it's a tiny bit more complex. It's a couple more steps, but it's not really hard. So what we've got here is a, uh, an explanation of how this, uh, how, you know, how to, this works and how to do it. What we're going to do is walk you through it. Now, the virtual dub is an open source piece of code and it requires a couple of plugins to work. So you can download them yourself, as we say in our article here, or you can just download the complete package that we assembled uh, by clicking this link. So we're going to do that, click on the link. And you download the file and uh, you don't have to do this probably, but I'm going to show you an extra step, which is to right click on it and select unblock. Sometimes this causes problems with Windows, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and it, all it's saying is that this isn't the world's most popular software. It came from the internet, so we really don't know what it is. So you should be careful with it. So just click unblock and be done. Uh, now what you do is you, write, uh, well, you can extract the, the zip file any way you want, but I just right click and drag. And I'll use the uh, Windows Explorer extraction tool. It's built into Windows. And we'll just click it. Uh... There we go. Now we've got the file and we're good to go. Uh, we can delete the zip file. It's no longer necessary, but you don't have to. You can let it sit there. The next thing to do is to get uh, a tool called Xvid. Well, it's not a tool, it's just a codec. Codecs are just instructions for how to compress and decompress video. And you think, I don't want to compress or decompress. Yeah, you probably do. MP4, for instance, is a type of compression. What you need to do is then click on this link and it'll take us over to uh, at the full XVID webpage. And there it is. Let's run it. Now, again, you can probably get away without doing this, but I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to unblock it. Uh, so let's just run the install. And it's a click next install, so I'm not going to take up your time with it beyond showing you the start here. You just click uh, through it. I already have it installed, so I'm going to click cancel here. Now, once you've got uh, that installed, you simply live in this little folder. Uh, Virtual Dub does not install. What it does is it uh, just, it's just a standalone, uh, standalone set of software. There are no shared DLLs, no shared code. And what you're looking for is vdub64.exe. In case you're wondering, that's the command line version, which, you know, so you can run things through scripts. I don't like running scripts. I don't, I just don't want to spend the time to figure it out. So just use the GUI. It works very well. And then you take whatever video file you're working on, which in my case is this one here, the sethome.mp4. Could be pretty much anything. Right click on it and select a zoom size because it's just too big to see. Uh, I like 50%, so let's do that. And I'll right click on the, this is the input. This is the output on the right. So I'm going to select 50% there just so I can see everything and I've maximized it. So it's just easier to see. Then we need to go in and turn on the shaker analysis, which is not very hard. You simply go to video and go to filters and click add and then find D shaker, which is right there. You can double click on it or click OK, whatever you want. And it will come up as pass one. You can look through this, but I wouldn't suggest you change anything. The defaults work pretty good. Click OK, click OK. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. Now, what this needs to do is the analysis. You've turned the filter on, but you need to actually have it run the analysis so it can go through and figure out what to move, what to change. So let's do that. So you click file and run video analysis pass. There we go. Now this is going to take, in my case, this is a two minute video and it's probably going to take about uh, five minutes. It might take a little longer right now. My computer is quite busy doing other things. I've got a, an eighth generation i7, so a pretty powerful machine. 
And this time is really because of the uh, what I've got ready in the background. Yours should actually, you know, shouldn't be five times your your, your length uh, of your video, your time of your video. Uh, if you want to speed it up, there's a couple things you can do. Neither of these make a huge difference, but the first is change the processing thread priority to even higher. And what that does is just say, look, I know what there's a lot of stuff going on in the background on your computer. Yeah, but I really want it. I want the CPU myself. The other thing you can do is to turn the uh, input and output off, and that will help as well. Yeah, so when I ran this previously, I was seeing frame rates of 16, 17 frames a second. It's simply that my computer is really busy right now. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop and we'll cut to uh, when this is finished in apparently about eight minutes. Don't worry if your screen goes blank like this. If you click somewhere else, it's completely normal. All right, so that's done. What you need to do now is go to video, filters, double click on D shaker and set it to pass two. And when pass two, there is something you probably want to change. You don't have to, but you probably want to, which is to use previous and future frames to fill in borders. Basically what this is going to do is uh, when you're de shaking things, when you're taking stable, when you're stabilizing things, well, what it's actually doing is, is uh, making the image you're using smaller. So the edges of your video move around become larger and smaller as the video stabilizer does its job. But you can correct for that by using this setting. You can play with the numbers, but the defaults have worked fine for me. So I'm just going to click OK and click OK. And then go to video and compression. And you think, I don't want to do compression. Yeah, like I said, you probably do. Uh, otherwise, this two, this two minute video, which I think is about 90 meg, comes out to two and two and a half gig. So you really do want to choose some compression here. So uh, choose the XVID uh, MP4 codec, which is what we uh, installed earlier. You can click configure and go in and uh, play with it. Uh, I wouldn't. I would simply click OK, but you can if you want to change size, make you know, make the video larger, or smaller, that kind of thing. Yeah, if you really want to tweak it, but I'm just going to click OK on this. And now what we have to do is save it. So click File, Save as AVI, and say, well, what do you want to call it? And I'm going to call this uh, Stable. Stable. There we go. That's enough for me. And I'll just save it there. And this, again, will take a few minutes, but what you want to do probably is change the processing thread to even higher. And again, you can turn video input and output off if you want. It doesn't seem to make much difference at this, uh, at this level. So at least that's been my experience. Uh, so you can see here we're getting, let's call it eight frames a second. And if I turn these off, it might go up one frame a second to nine. So, I mean, it's enough of a change, I guess, you know, 10%, but it's not radical. So I'm going to turn this back on so you, we can see as it goes that the video on the right, which is the output, is actually going to be pretty crisp. Okay, so we don't waste more of your time. What I'll do is we'll skip through this and we'll show you the result at the end. All right, so that's done. We can close this window. And now let's take a look at our files. So I've got the original file, you can see is 92 meg. The stabilized file is 81, so a little bit smaller. Uh, and let's take a look at the quality of the video. Okay, so the video on the left is the original and the video on the right is the stabilized. And you can see quite a difference. Let's go to the end where it was particularly shaky. Let's see if we can time it up here, sync it up. There, now take a look at how shaky that is and how stable this is. Not bad, huh? All right, if you found this video useful, please click like. And if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe, as we'd uh, really appreciate it because it helps so much with the Google algorithms. If you have a question or concern, please put it in the comment section below. We'll be happy to get back to you usually within a day or so. Alternately, you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's U-R-T-E-C-H.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.